Hello everyone, welcome. You're watching Voices and we're delighted that you've joined us for this very, very special program as we highlight youth. During the month of July, which has just passed, we've been talking about youth in leadership. And as you view Voices Today, a program of the Communication Department of the Atlantic Caribbean Union, we're delighted to welcome two very young people to our program, and I hope you enjoy their input today. First of all, we have Sister Brielle Jacques, and we have Brother Adriel Hebern. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if I count as very young anymore, <laughs> but thank you for the last video introduction. <laughs> Thank God for the rumor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for it. It's, it's really a joy to have you both, and I feel excited um, from the youth angle of the union just to have you share with us in studio. Um, just recently, we've been talking about two very special programs. One is the Youth in Leadership Month, an overall covering, and in addition to that, there is also what is called Pass It On. I just want to ask you, um, let me start with you, uh, please, Adriel. Right. What is Pass It On? Uh, well, Pass It On, technically speaking, is an initiative, you know, using all the fancy words, right? It's an initiative to encourage youth involvement in all the stuff in the church. But in a more practical sense, it's about getting the young persons involved. Like if, if church ministry were a baton, it's passing it on to the next generation, not holding on to it uh, as if you're the only one who can do it. So it's really about engaging all members of the church in church work specifically targeted at the youth and getting them involved and active. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, for you, Brael, this, this is around the overall theme of Lord Transform Me. And so when we're transformed, we'd want to pass it on. Yes. All right. Can you tell us a little bit then about this Youth in Leadership Month? What, what have you guys been doing? Well, at Johnson Park, it was definitely the youth in leadership. You had a youth elder, you had youth deacons, youth deaconesses. Every aspect of the church was filled with the youth of the church, and they were playing the role. We were playing the role as our older members would have played. Yes. Okay, and, and just for the just for the benefit of the viewing audience. I'd like to, I'd like to, uh, having given that introduction, I'd like for you to be able to tell the audience a little bit about yourself so that they can appreciate where you're coming from as we talk about youth and leadership, as we talk about pass it on, and as we talk about Lord transform me. Um, can we say ladies first? Absolutely ladies first. Uh, tell <laughs> us a little bit about yourself, please. Okay, well, my name is Brian Jack, mm -hmm. and uh, I am the daughter of Elmore and Brian Jack. I have two sisters, Brinique and Brunel. Mm -hmm. um, well, my family is from, the, our membership is at Hillview, but I'm at Johnson Park. Nothing now. wrong with that. <laughs> and I've enjoyed it for the past couple of years of that, that I've been there. Okay, yes. and what are you doing now? I am a teacher, a trained teacher for the government of the Bahamas. I teach at the Willard Patton Preschool. Okay, what are your specialties? Preschool. Preschool. Yes, that's, that's my area. Early childhood is mm -hmm. my, where my degree is in, but I, but, but I specialize with the preschool as okay. well. Okay, excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. Can we pass the baton? <laughs> yes, <laughs> go ahead, Adriel. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> uh, as you said, my name is Adriel Hepburn. Uh, my parents are Andrea and Carol Hepburn. Like Brielle, I have two siblings. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the middle child. I have an older brother and a younger brother. Um, I, my older brother lives abroad, and when school is in session, my younger brother lives abroad as well because he's in school. I work as a pensions analyst for Bono Chappelle, which is a, a Canadian consulting firm here in the Bahamas. And pensions analyst sounds like a boring job, but I, I like it because it's challenging and it matters to persons. When we talk about passing things on, I guess it's apropos that I do that because as young people we need to be involved in things and with the pension side that's as old persons are looking, sorry not old persons, <laughs> retiring people are looking forward to getting out of the way and getting on to their retirement. Okay. Adriel, you didn't always do that though. No, I, no, I didn't. I, in, a, in a past life I was, a, <laughs> I was like Brielle, I was a teacher. Okay. I taught uh, math at R.M. Bailey High School mm -hmm. for five years and then I transition, at least I'd like to think I transition, but I feel God is still always calling me to teach in some way, shape, or form. Okay. And I do remember that you were a math teacher yeah. specialist, <laughs> and you excelled in that area. Everybody likes to say that. Yes. Um, I taught math. I would not 
go as far as I was a specialist, maybe I was, I don't know, it could be the Bible, you know, where they say that you sit at the lower seat and let somebody call you to the forefront. Okay. So if you say I'm a specialist, I'll trust you on that, <laughs> but I would never wear that, put that crown on my head myself. It's a joy to have you guys. We want to talk, both of you now worshiping at the Johnson Park Church. Yes. Okay. And do you realize Voices covers the Cayman Islands, it covers the Turks and Caicos, and it covers, of course, South and North um, Bahamas conferences, right? Mm -hmm. And as you have participated in the month of July, we're, we're recapping and seeing how things went. Did you get a chance to have guest speakers during the month? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. Two guest speakers. Okay. And then we had our two homegrown speakers. Ah, tell us about those. Um, we had Pastor Abdel. Jo well, yes. she she's being. <laughs> here's a little breakdown for it because she's being a little too modest. But you know when you want a, a full plate of food and the person just being shy with it. Okay. So what we had done for the month was we said, because we had youth and leadership, uh -huh. as Brian had alluded to earlier, all of the. The Wednesday nights for the month of July and the Sabbath morning programs were completely done by the young persons. Okay. Not just in terms of the sermon, but in terms of offerings, Everything. scripture, prayer on the Wednesday night, delivering the message, all of that. Mm -hmm. And as a part of that, we had two guest speakers during the month. We had Pastor Abdel George mm -hmm. uh, as the second speaker in the month, and we had uh, Willie Ramos, Willie Ramos, the ghetto preacher, yes. okay. To, okay. to speak for us for the last week in the, in the month. And in between that, I started it off on the first week, and then we had another one of our members, Brother Elton Sands, who, did, who gave the message on the third week. Okay. So can I ask then, Brian, uh, Adriel said he started the month off in yes, terms of the started, Sabbath. Yes. How was that? That was <laughs> awesome. It was a great sermon, and it was... <laughs> As you can tell, he is a funny guy. Okay. So, you know, throughout the sermons, you had a little chuckle here and there, but the message came home, and he, he broke it down. The Bible text that he gave is very clear, and his message wasn't, it wasn't all over the place, I guess you can say. It was straight to the point, and it wasn't a long message at all. All right. <laughs> all right. So, so sounds well, like a win. Gravity <laughs> has its place, right? Yes. 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 Now, you mentioned that Willie Ramos uh, came in. Uh, who is Willie Ramos? The ghetto preacher. Yes. <laughs> that, that's, and that's what he calls himself. I don't want anyone to think we're being disrespectful. That's no, what he calls himself. Willie like Ramos, the ghetto preacher. Mm -hmm. For the last week of July, from the Thursday, sorry, from the Wednesday night until the Sabbath morning, we had uh, Willie Ramos. He, he gave us messages on the park because what we did was we, for the last week, we left the confines of Johnson Park Church. We yes. went out into a community park. Mm -hmm. We served the speakers. We had musician, musical guests, and everything like that. And we had Willie Ramos give his sermon, give yes. his messages, and I think it had a great impact. His testimonies, as he said, those, his test was his testimonies. And Brother Ramos, I don't call him pastor. I try not to call him pastor. Brother Ramos was awesome. When I say awesome, 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 and I, I know for a fact that his messages reach the young people there on the park. Even those who weren't sitting physically there but who were in the community, I'm sure it reached them. Okay, and he's not a pastor, he, he indicated, is it? No, he's, he's, no, he's an evangelist, he's a, he's a lay preacher. So, he, so he's, he's not a, a pastor, but he does give his messages mm -hmm. um, in, in a good way. I, I think, and one of the things he had said, I think it was on the Sabbath morning, uh, the last day we had him, he had said, he, he related an experience in which he was going somewhere and, and the person picked him up and the person said to him, Willie, I don't like you. I don't like the way you dress. Mm -hmm. I don't like the way you preach. Mm -hmm. I don't like how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. But last year when you did a crusade, my daughter got baptized. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the key things to take away from it, mm -hmm. particularly with, as we say, youth taking leadership. So often we have an idea as to what leadership should be or as to what these roles should be. Yeah. But as long as God is calling you to do that thing, it and as long as it, who it is. exactly it doesn't matter who it is or how they look doing that thing, if God is leading them, then you have to have faith that God knows why He's having the person take that approach. Yeah. Okay, what what stands out in your mind with regards to his messages? You know, his messages were experiences. They weren't just okay. You have the Bible text, and you know you have the story in the Bible. But his, his messages related, his experiences related to the Bible text that he had. And it, his experiences were one that you can relate to as a young person. Mm -hmm. his, how he spoke, mm -hmm. you can relate to him. 
he he started off his messages with a a rap. A rap. <laughs> yes. Okay. I know a yeah. lot of people aren't used to <laughs> yeah. that, but that was totally different. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Um, so he's a rapper. Yeah, he singer. said he wanted to be a rapper before. Ooh, okay, okay. <laughs> so he entangled all of that into his message, and it, it really, really, I don't know. I, I can't find the exact word to use for it, but it was it was it striked home. Okay. Striked I think home. there was sincerity to it. Yes. That it's it's you know every every preacher, whether there's a pastor or whomever, I guess in, in every ministry, everyone has their style. So when a young person takes the the forefront on something, mm -hmm. if they're doing something sincere, I think it has a greater impact than if I'm just doing what I think you do or what you what I think I'm supposed to be doing. And I think yes. that's a part of what drove his message home was that there was this, like she's saying, this real experience. Like he's not talking what someone else told him. It, this was his experience with God. This was his walk. This is how he has seen God work in his life. Obviously he was a member of a gang or something yes. like that also. Yes. Been stabbed a yeah. number of times Over also. So Yeah, times, I, I think he was stabbed actually. 23 times. Blocks, wow. Yeah. Okay. And he got shot. I think he got shot. I think, I think, yes, he did say yes. he got shot as well. So yeah. it wasn't a play play kind of thing no. and, and saying, oh, I know what it's like to walk in these streets. Like no. he literally walked, walked the streets. streets. Yeah. Okay. He worked the streets, he lived in the streets. Now, on that last weekend, the weather, the weather played a part, wasn't it? Yes, yes. That's, that was Saturday, Sabbath morning. Mm -hmm. We was, I was excited, and like I told when we went, we had to move from the park, the C.I. Gibson Park. I was extremely excited to be out of the church, uh, to have a, a totally different setup for the Sabbath School and Divine Worship Program. And um, I really, really wanted to be there so that you can continue what we started during the week. But the rain didn't hold up on us, so we had to go back to the church. And like I said to the audience, because I was moderating, I said, I still feel excited even though we're still in the church walls. Mm -hmm. We At some point you're gonna have, and Pastor Ram, Brother Ramos said that, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to come, you're gonna go out into the community, but you're gonna have to bring them into the church. And mm -hmm. that's what it's all about, going mm -hmm. out, reaching somebody, and um, I, eventually they will come to the truth. And that's what it's all about. Uh, you guys moved into the church, you're saying, yes. and, and you did that like in midstream. Yes. Yes. First of all, you did show up at the park yes. on yes. the Sabbath morning. Yeah, they set up and everything. Wow. Yeah, and it, I remember someone had called me, said, um, Adriel, I, I see clouds, are we are we still on the park? I said, yeah, no, no, no it ain't raining this side, not raining this side. <laughs> and then like shortly after the rain came down, so we had to open up church. Fortunately, church was, was very close. and. I think the park would have been great, but the good part, I'm trying to find the silver lining in it all, was that I didn't know if there was enough bench space on the park for as many people showed up to church. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the one advantage mm -hmm. of us having to retreat to church is that there were sufficient seats for everybody um, who had showed up. So it was, a, it was a very good crowd of persons who, who had come out to support that Sabbath morning. I commend you guys. Have you found that young people are just looking for something to do? Yes, yes, yes. Even myself. I tell everybody, I do not want to be in the forefront. But she after, always saying that. <laughs> <laughs> after the week, after that weekend, it, it gives you that boost to go on and to do what it is that God expects of us to do. You know, we can't be selfish with, with what He wants us to do. And so. I, I must uh, testify to, to Brielle. I, I, was, I was thoroughly impressed with Brielle, um, not because she's incompetent or anything to that effect. But she was always on the ball. When things came up, she was always sending messages in, in WhatsApp groups or texts or calls to, make, to take care of things. So she really did an excellent job. I know often we wait until persons you know, die or, or leave and say, oh, I wish this person was here to do a good job. But Brian did a really good job that weekend Thank in terms you. of coordinating things. And would you say Brian is shy? No, I, like to, I would say Rael <laughs> thinks she is shy, but she's not shy. She just likes to think she is. Thank you, guys. Listen, man, time goes by so quickly. We're going to take a break, and okay. we'll come back in just a moment. All right? Okay. okay. One in three women around the world are victims of physical or psychological repression. End it now. More than 135 million girls and women have undergone female genital mutilation, and an additional 2 million girls and women are at risk each year, 6,000 every day. 
end it now. In the United States, one woman is battered every 15 seconds, usually by her husband or boyfriend. End it now. One in five women around the world will be the victim of rape or attempted rape in her lifetime. End it now. Why now? Because we can't wait. Welcome back. This is Voices, and Voices is a program that reaches throughout the length and breadth of the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands, as well as the North and South Bahamas Conference. We've been blessed today to have on st in studio Brother Adriel Heburn, Sister Brielle Jock, and we welcome them again. And Thanks. as we ended our program, I want to begin with you to say that it seems to me that the young people really want to be involved. As our theme says, total member involvement also. Do you find that young people really want to be involved? They want to be doing for the Lord? Ladies first. <laughs> Um, I think that young people do want to be involved, but involved in their own way, and a special way. I think that young people don't want to do the same thing over and over and over again. It has to be changed up. It has to be something different. And yeah, I do think that young people want to work. I, I think I would, agree, I would definitely agree with that. And I think we look at young people as if it's a subset of people. I mean, there are some ways that that's true. but. People want to be involved in things, but they want to feel engaged in things. Like if, um, for food, for example, if, if I offered you a dish that you didn't like, you wouldn't eat it. But if you had a chance to choose what you could eat, then by all means you'd go for that. And that's the same thing with, with persons. We see young people getting involved in all kinds of things, and sometimes we bemoan it and we cry out, oh, they don't want to do things in church. But what are the things in church that are being offered for persons to do? Because the things that you do in men's ministry wouldn't be the things that you do in women's ministry or the children, same thing for the young people. So young people want to be involved. They want things to do. So give them an opportunity not just to do, but to have input in what they're going to do. Yes. Yes. Okay. That, that, that says a whole lot. I remember when I was growing up, uh, we were in church all the time, but we did not know as much as we were expected or required to know. We were there. We were just sitting. Um, it did not interest us to that extent. Do you find the same thing happening today? Yes. Oh. Yes. I, I actually <laughs> just spoke to a young lady today. She said she's an Adventist, but she does her own thing now. And she went to one of our churches. And she, she said, man, I used to come to the X, Y, and Z, but by the time it's halfway, I'm already sleeping. I'm already sleeping. I don't have an interest, and that's the reality. Though we, we, we don't, church is not a performance, and that's what Pastor Ramos made mention. It's not a performance. It's something where you come and you give your all, you worship God, you praise God, and, and the reality is young people know when you're faking, and young people know when you're being real, and they want something that is, is, is of substance, of substance. Mm. I, I'm it's a personal area for me. And I can't put all of this entirely on young persons because just like Brad said, they know when you're fake. If we start from the top and work our way to the bottom, I, I teach Sabbath school class, I'm a Sabbath school superintendent. So I have access to the records of my class and when I'm superintendent, I see everyone's classes. People aren't studying, right? So we have adults, senior members who aren't showing that they know these things. Mm -hmm. So if, if I don't know it, I can't teach it to someone who is under me. And I think that's a part of the problem. We've had people coming up through church who just do it because it's what I've always done. My grandmother was in the church, my mother's in the church, my auntie is this, my uncle is that. And then there's a, a young person, a child, who I assume is going to get it by osmosis. And I think that's a part of the problem. If I don't have a love for God and for doing things, I can't pass it on. Mm -hmm. And the, the reality is something as simple as having Pastor Ramos, the ghetto preacher, it caught the interest of the young people. So when we come to talking about what we believe in, what's in the Bible, what we believe in, I'm sure young people will be more open to hear what he has to say and to go through if it's 
um, you know, we use guidelines or we use pamphlets to say, well, we say this is the fundamentals. But I'm sure because he's gotten the attention of the young people and if he, he, he talks about the fundamentals or the beliefs or what's in the Bible, people are more prone to listen to what he's saying because there's an interest that was growing there. Okay. All right, I hear you both saying that it's a <coughs> two-pronged situation. Yes. Uh, you don't want to put all the blame on the young people. You don't want to put all the blame on the leadership of the church. Right. So we have to work together. Yes. The theme that we've embraced is total member involvement. So there is that attempt, at least by the church, to try and make a difference. Yes. We feel that this should begin with this, Lord, transform, transform me. me. Yeah. So it begins with us. Yes. We're saying out there that our young people should really make the best effort to to give credence and value to their God time yes. and to God. <clears throat> Absolutely. I remember for an AY I did, um, I did a little survey. It wasn't scientific, but I'd asked some of the younger persons in church you know, to fill out some things. And how much time do you spend in family worship? How much time do you spend praying? and I put in brackets, not for food. Okay. How much time do you spend reading the Bible? Mm -hmm. And most persons had less than an hour for a week. Wow. So no matter what's going on in my church, because I know a lot of times young people, I say, yeah, that's right, the elders ain't doing this, and the deacon is not doing that. But Lord transform me, not Lord transform them, it's Lord transform me. So if I see these problems, I need to pray, God, please help me so that I could be a, a, a light, so I could help change these things. And it's a personal thing. It's it a says personal Lord, transform. It's clear. Mm -hmm. Transform me. It's okay. a personal thing. Though we, we want to create programs that are catering to young people, the reality is if the young persons do not choose, mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do. So it is a it is a personal thing as well. So you're saying to me that if if I stay up or go out on a Friday night. It's a choice. Uh, yeah. I, I can't I can't give God a hundred percent on a Sabbath morning. I may fall asleep be, during a sermon or whatever that is. Be, beyond that, if if I if I feed my mind certain things mm -hmm. during the week, that's going to build a certain appetite. So that's why I sometimes to some person Sabbath feels like a prison, yeah. because if all during the week I mm -hmm. am going, moving back and forth, doing all these different things, whether it's good things or bad things, when it comes time to resting on a Sabbath, I'm fidgety because I've not trained my body for that. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with us as young people. We can't just think I can flip a switch. I can okay. do this thing. And, and I've been in a situation before where I've, I've commented to a person. I said, wow, thank God I don't listen to certain kind of things. Because when I was in the car and stuck in traffic and then someone pulls up on the side of me, hey, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. If I was listening to other things, I'd have this <laughs> look of embarrassment. Like, oh, oh, my goodness. oh, my goodness, this person caught me doing yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So I think as young persons, um, church as a whole, but since we're dealing with the, the young persons, we have to be mindful of what we feed ourselves and realize that you can't serve two masters. Yes. I can't do one thing today and I think I can just flip a switch, do something else tomorrow and there'll be no carryover. Yes. Okay. Well, go ahead. Go when ahead, it Brian. pertains to the, the program that we just had with in the park and um, I don't know how it all came about, mm -hmm. but the program really was a good program because it literally makes you as an individual, you have to push yourself mm -hmm. and the persons around you will be pushing you as well to work hard, to push harder, to reach this one, to get out of your shell and to speak to somebody who you would have never spoken to before. Mm -hmm. You get to work with amazing people and you learn from them, you know? And I think that was a good thing to bring persons together in the church. Mm -hmm. um, the pr people that I worked with, I could list a whole list of persons, wow. but I know for sure that I've gained something from each person. Okay. Let me, let me shift gears a moment. We've talked about the young persons and their responsibilities. What about a word to the leadership, the elders, the officers, those in charge of our churches across the board? What would you say to them to help them to understand how the young people are thinking, what they're looking for, how should we relate to them? Should we pander to everything that they say? Do we try to change the whole church just to, you know, suit their no, situations? I, no. What do you say? No, I, I don't think you should pander to anybody in any, no. in any age group, any, any demographic. Mm -hmm. But I think if we have a relationship with God, and I know that sounds cliche and trite, but God is going to lead us into how these things should be done. Okay. So when I see Brielle come to church and she's wearing something I think is inappropriate or whatever the case is, if I have a relationship with God, I'm not going to see the inappropriate 
thing. I'm going to see, thank God, Briar is in church. And I think oftentimes in leadership positions, we often look at the problem as the negative. Like, okay, I need to fix this. I need to fix that. Like, that's God's job to fix that. Yeah. It's your job to bring people in and let the Holy Spirit work on them. Because and I think we're all guilty of this at times. We would look at things that have taken my... I'm, I'm where I am now after a lifelong journey, and I still have ways to go. Yeah. But when I see you, I need you to change instantly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a part of the problem. Not that we need to kowtow and cater and bend to mm -hmm. each and every win, but let God lead and let God move. Yeah. Okay. Um, the leaders of the church, pastors, elders, the reality is that you have to interact with whoever you're around. Young people or the person, whoever it may be. You have to interact. You have to be present. You have to, just like Pastor Raming, he made a comment and said that, because I was back and forth with him, and I said, Pastor Raming, X, Y, and Z could we do it this way? He said, Brian, the young people are leading. You make that decision. And that's the reality. You have to have faith and believe that you, you will put forth that effort of training, mm -hmm. um, and you've prayed about this, and you know that it's an initiative that God wants to go forward. And you as the leader have to put that, uh, I guess, trust the trust and to, the confidence, mm -hmm. build up the confidence of the people, the young persons around you, that they will be able to be the leaders for the future. And that's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. If we were getting younger, then fine. <laughs> right. Just relax. Don't worry about okay. the young people because you're going to get young and you'll stay right in that position. Mm -hmm. But it's not working like that. To that, uh, she, she reminded me of something. When I think about Pathfinders, right, because we're both involved in Pathfinders, every year we have an exhibition. So you spend all year training the Pathfinders for the exhibition, but on that day they have to perform, they have to compete, they have to display what they would have done. I can't get in there for them. But it's yeah. two things that affect. One, I had to have been training them to let them go to exhibition. I can't say it's exhibition time, what are you going to do? And secondly, once they're doing it, I have to let them do it. I can't run in the midst of it and try to stop it. And in the same way, I think with church, as a whole, if God is running this mm -hmm. and you've trained the person, yes, they're going to make mistakes and yes, they're going to do things differently than you are, but God is in control, so it's not your place to give someone a, uh, the scripture to read and because they fumble over words, you pull the Bible away from them and say, no, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I think on a larger scale, that's something that uh, to integrate young persons, that's I think an, an attitude mm -hmm. leadership in every capacity needs to, to take into consideration. So both of you are <coughs> actively involved in Pathfinders? Yes. yes. Very. Okay. So I may miss a Sunday or two, I have to be honest. Mm -hmm. But yes, I love Pathfinders. Okay. I need to get more involved. Well, <laughs> listen, there's always there's a the confession is good <laughs> for the soul. But yeah, no, we have at our Pathfinder Club, I think on a good day, we would be about 80 deep in terms of children. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're very blessed at Johnson Park because I think, and I'm not saying this to brag, but to give credit to God, I think we have more offices than some clubs have children because we may have about 15 officers or so. Mm -hmm. So that allows us, God is blessed with the human resource, so we're right. able to handle that many children. Okay. And even outside of the, the children we, at our church, um, some of us, we have community pathfinder clubs for children who are, who are in the community but not a part of our church. So the God's Property Pathfinder Club and the Gladiators for Christ Pathfinder Clubs are two pathfinder clubs we've been working with for over 10 years now mm -hmm. um, in terms of community outreach because Pathfinders is great, but it can't just be kept inside the church. It has, it has to go to benefit other persons as well. So what you're saying to me is that um, not only do you have Pathfinders at Johnson Park, but there are places where you may have a active Pathfinder, Pathfinder Club. Right, a non-church where we would have an active Pathfinder Club. Um, mm -hmm. A few schools, I think, have them as well. And I'm not even just mm -hmm. talking about um, Bahamas Academy, you know, the Adventist school here, but non-Adventist non schools as well because it's the Great Commission. We have to go out, and it's not mm -hmm. going out to other Adventists solely, yeah. but it's going out mm -hmm. everywhere and, and spreading this gospel. Yeah. And go our, ahead, our churches, we can look at our churches as a find the glove and That's right. That's because right. if we look at it from that angle, we're a church, but we are in a community. Mm -hmm. And now, if, if our mandate is to go out, why not just start with your community where you're at? Go out and knock on one door. Beautiful. Just get that courage, pray to God, and go out and do it. He will give you it. Yes. He will give you it. Listen, let me just ask you to wrap up this way. One, I want you just to say whether and how you enjoyed the, the month. 
Lord Transform Me, and then give a word of encouragement to some young person out there dealing with the Lord Transform Me, the Pass It On, and then the total member involvement. Brian, I pick on you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, well, I thoroughly enjoyed the month of July. Thoroughly. It was an awesome, awesome month. And personally, it has allowed me to come out of my little your, shell your, a little bit more. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. to work more and I've been shying away from doing what I know that I should be doing and I think that a lot of young people that's where we're at we just complacent and we're we're comfortable but the reality is you got to get out of that comfortable place and do something a little bit different mm. and it's a personal choice so I encourage you to read more mm -hmm. and to pray to God and ask, ask him to give that uh, encouragement that What's the word I'm looking for? That that leadership role that we might be hiding inside of us okay. and do what we need to do. Thank you so much. Um, and I guess I'll speak to the opposite side because there are some persons who are complacent and then there are others who, like Elijah, felt like they were the only one in all of Israel loyal to uh, God. So sometimes you have a young person who is doing something they feel like, I'm the only one. You're not the only one. Um, so reach out to other persons. Sometimes that means people outside of your church. If mm -hmm. you go to church A, mm -hmm. you may have to go to someone who goes to church B and right. swap AYs or, mm -hmm. or swap pathfinder clubs mm -hmm. or whatever the case is, but you're not in it alone. Um, and even if you were, he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Yeah. So mm -hmm. no matter what your circumstance, it may be trying, but go, if you believe that God has called you into this thing, God is going to be able to supply what you need for you to get through it. Thank you so much. It's been a real joy, a real pleasure having you both. I'd like for you both to know that we're very, very proud of you all. Thank you. We Thank wish you. you all the best. We cover you in prayer. And to the viewing audience, we've been watching Voices. We've been having as our special guests, we've had as our special guests, Sister Brielle Jack and Brother Adriel Heber. And Thank you so much for watching. And we pray that God will continue to use you and make you a blessing in the life of somebody else also. Thank you.